Good morning. Hey, it's good to see you. And um, as, as Pastor John mentioned, we're starting a new series. It's called Easier Said Than Done. And so we're going to look at some different passages of Scripture. We're going to talk about some things that, frankly, they're easy to talk about, but they're really hard to practice. And so uh, we're going to dive right in. In fact, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 5. I'm just going to warn you. Like, uh, this is a tough passage of Scripture. And I, I looked at this. Um, in fact, I preached this probably uh, part of it. I, I preached really the piece before this and then included this, uh, the piece I'm going to read to you. But back in February of 2016, um, we're talking about loving your enemies. Does anybody remember that back in February? Maybe a couple of you. That's why I'm preaching it again. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, but no, really what, what it is, is the fact that I think I shared this with you um, maybe a few weeks ago that we kind of started something different in January and we're trying it through Easter. And what that is, is that we are covering the same scripture that our kids, kindergarten through fourth grade, are covering back there. And, uh, and, and the point of that is this, is so like when you go to lunch with your kids or your grandkids and you can say, hey, we learned about loving our enemy, they can say, hey, we did too. And the whole family can have a conversation about it. So uh, we're just trying, we're trying to equip families to be able to better lead their families. So, so let's take a look at it. It says, you've heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you, and that way you'll be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives us his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for the people who are gathered in this room. And, and Lord, a, a very difficult passage of Scripture. It's, it's easy to say that we will love those who don't love us, but it's a really hard thing to practice. I pray that even as we leave this place today, that we'll have maybe a couple practical things that we might be able to practice, but I also pray that, Lord, if, if there are people here today who are all messed up inside in regards to having people in their life that there's extreme conflict or people in their life that they've written off that, that Lord, we almost have to work to not like, that, God, you would address those things, that you would help us, that you'd help us to see from a different perspective today. I ask that uh, we would be obedient to what we hear in Jesus' name, amen. You know, as we looked at this, um, I think the Jesus story is centered around love, right? In fact, I think I mentioned that to you a few weeks ago. I mean, the whole, the whole point of God sending his son was because he loved us so much, right? Are you with me? You're tired, aren't you? I feel it. You know, um, and, and I think if, if his whole story is centered around love and we call ourselves followers of Jesus, then our story should probably be centered around love as well. In fact, there's a couple of scriptures that I want you to look at. Um, and the first one is this, is, is just what we just, what we just talked about. You've heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. And that way, you'll be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. And then 1 John puts it this way. It's very blunt. It says, we love each other because he loved us first. If someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? And he has given us this command. Hear it. Those who love God must also love their fellow believers. Now, I realize some of you are like, you know, you're sitting back there and you're going, uh-huh. I'm, I'm just joking. If your arms are crossed, I'm not picking on you, right? What I am talking though about is, is a heart attitude, an attitude that says, okay, like, because you really think about this. I, I kind of wanted to change and go a different direction today. And I prayed about that last weekend because, I mean, as I was listening 
Two weeks ago, Pastor John preached on forgiveness, right? And he peeled the onion. You remember that? Maybe, you, you know, you who were here, he, he peeled the onion. He talked about peeling off the layers of forgiveness. We came back last week and we talked about not throwing stones, right? Being willing to lay down our stones, practice grace as God has practiced grace with us. And then to come back this week and love your enemies, like, whew, we are working you over, aren't we? <laughs> but, but I also know this, I, like sometimes I think it takes multiple times and I do think it is kind of like peeling an onion. That there's times where God is working on our hearts and he does it a layer at a time. And the truth is, this is an extremely difficult subject that most of the time what we do is we say, you don't know my enemy, Kevin. Right? You have no idea how they hurt me. And if you think I'm gonna love them, you are mistaken. And, and my challenge to you would be, just listen. And I'm not saying listen to me. I'm talking about open your heart up and, and put your guard down for just a moment and, and allow him to speak to you. Because I think this is a critical piece. In fact, last night, it was powerful. It was powerful in this place. I, we, we preached this message and we gave people just an opportunity to respond. And, and you, could, you could feel his presence here and you could feel him dealing with people. And a whole lot of people came and received help last night. I think this is a critical subject for us to get right. See, the life that Jesus invites us to is radically different than what we're accustomed to seeing. In fact, um, let's just talk about it. The passage right before this, this is what you might remember from a year ago. We talked about if someone slaps you on the cheek, what do you do? You offer the other. We talked about if someone asks for your shirt, what do you give them? You give them your cloak uh, as well. We talked about that if someone says, hey, carry my stuff for a mile, that Jesus would say, oh, no, no, carry it for two. And then he goes on directly into this passage and he says, but I say, right, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. When I think about where this starts, um, for me, uh, I, I think that one of the practical things that God showed me this week was right here in this verse. Pray for those who persecute you. You know, I thought maybe for some who are saying, I'm so tired of feeling what I feel for my enemies. I'm so tired of being messed up inside. I'm so tired of being angry that this might be the place to start. That what we would do is, is and you know, and here's the deal. You don't have to dig deep to find that person in your mind, do you? You don't have to dig deep. They're there. They are there. In fact, you wish you could put them deeper, but you can't. Uh-huh. And, and, and here's, I think, the picture. The picture is that maybe step one would be that you would just begin to say a prayer for them. That's what Jesus is saying. Hey, maybe a start is that you would quit, you know, sometimes, and you're like, okay, yeah, I pray for them. Like, like voodoo doll kind of pray, right? <laughs> like, Lord, you know exactly what you need to do to them, Right? Like sometimes we pray, but it's probably not the kind of prayers that Jesus is encouraging us to do. This kind of prayer would say, God, I, I, I'm just going to start with saying, God, I, maybe it's, God, I don't know how to love them. I have no idea how to love them. People, someone who's hurt me so bad, I don't know what to do with them. But Lord, I'm just bringing them to you. Simplest form of prayer you could do. I think what you'll discover, and I've, I've said this to you before because I've practiced it in my own life, that when you have difficult people in your life, if you'll begin to pray for them, God may not change them, but I'm pretty confident he'll probably change you. That as you pray, he begins to talk to you about things of like, hey, um, it seems like maybe like you're kind of angry about them. Or it seems like, that maybe, like, I know you're praying for them, but let's take a look at your own heart and how you're dealing with them. Now, I tell you, like, that shuts down your prayer life fast, doesn't it? Because we're okay with it being about them, but usually when we begin to pray, it becomes more about us. You know, um, here's the other thing I'd say that was in this passage that I thought was really, really good. You know, it's hard, right, to, uh, when we think about love, what does love look like? For most of us, we would define love as this like, you know, I love, right? Like this emotion of love. 
that I'd want to put my arm around them. You know, you're going, oh my word, Kevin, I would never do that to the person that I have in my mind, right? I'll show you love. <laughs> but see, this is, this is a different kind of picture. In fact, the word that's used in this passage for love is not the, like, I was watching a TV show this last week and there was this lady and she was saying, oh, I knew I loved him the first time he talked. Really? And then what she said was, she said, I felt my heart go pitter-patter, pitter-patter. And I was like, oh, my word, pitter-patter. Now, many of you, I mean, you probably remember, right? You may remember at one point when you felt your heart go pitter-patter. Maybe for some of you, you're like, oh, I still love him just like I did yesterday, pitter-patter, pitter-patter. Uh-huh. This is a different kind of love in this passage. I mean, I mean we can see... That, the word love is used all throughout scripture and, and you'll see that word used at different places in scripture that's the pitter-patter kind of love, right? But this kind of love is not that. This kind of word, this, this word is called agape. And this kind of love is not really, it, let me describe it this way. The word refers not to a feeling, but to an action. So when it's used here, love your enemies, it's talking about this way in which we would love for the good of the other. That I will love someone in a way which says, I truly want like, God's best for them. Can you wrap your head around that? See, I think some, one of the hardest things about this passage is sometimes we preach it and what, what circulates in your minds is, is that you have an enemy, that you have someone who drives you crazy, that you have someone that you'd rather like, you know, be done with. And somehow or another, you're supposed to feel love for them. It's not what Jesus is saying. I, I don't think he's looking for you to, like, to wrap your arms around them and give them hugs and you know, whisper sweet nothings in their ear. I think what he's saying is, I want you to get to the place where you can truly will the good for them. My good for them. That when you'd pray, you'd say, God, I truly, like, Lord, help them to discover your best. I know they need it. Right? I want that for them. You know, that looks completely different than this feeling of love. You know, and then I would say this in, in Matthew 5, 45, in that way you'll be acting. It says if we can actually practice this, in that way you'll be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. You know, one of the things I, I just want you to think about, because, because this is really, I think, this is probably the most one of the most significant things as we talk about forgiveness, as we talk about practicing grace, as we talk about this loving our enemies, like we talk about kind of letting them go. See, here's the deal. We tend to make it about them. We tend to say, Kevin, you have no idea what they've done. You have no idea how terrible they are. Like, no, not gonna do it. But I'll tell you what you're doing. You're just hurting yourself. The reason I think that God is so specific and he hammers us on forgiveness and, and, and there's passages like this, like love your enemies. It's because he knows that when it's the opposite, when we can't stand our enemies and we're practicing out of that kind of heart, that it's destroying us. Yeah. And I've been there. I've been there where, where you have hard feelings for someone, right? And those things just keep surfacing. And it changes who we are. It messes with us in not a good way. In fact, a lot of times, you know this too, when you have someone that you are in deep conflict with, that sometimes what you do is you push that down, right? You push it down, you push it down, you push it down. But what you discover is it comes out. But it comes out in all kinds of other weird ways. What I would say is, what God wants for you is to let them go. To practice some form of forgiveness, some form of truly like saying, I'm going to pray for them and I'm going to, God, just want your best for them. I, I can't promise I'm going to feel it, but I'm going to let them go and I'm going to quit carrying it because I think it's what's best for you. And I don't think you want to be held captive to this other thing that's going on in your heart and your mind. You know, one of the things I would say is, um, so when I think about my own life, like, so, you know, some people would say probably leading the church could be complicated or difficult. The most difficult thing I do is not lead the church. The most difficult thing I do is parent two kids. Are you with me? Yeah. I mean, every day is different. 
You know, there's, there's at least when I, I feel like when I'm a pastor here, there's some sort of guidebook, right? <laughs> but sometimes in parenting, like they should have given you a manual, right? To know exactly what to do at what age when the circumstance arises. But it's complicated. It's hard. And, and, and here's what I know, that at times I have to pick between parenting and peace. See, if I don't parent, I can just live in this realm of peace most of the time. Like, just let them do what they, you know, as long as they're not hurting each other, right? Or hurting me, let them do whatever. And boy, it's peaceful. But at times, I have to parent, right? And when I choose to parent, then it gets complicated. Sometimes it gets nasty in the house, right? It gets chilly. And, and, and I think about this. See, but here, here's what's really important. If I don't parent, I will not raise my kids in a way in which they're going to grow up and become the people that I think God wants them to be. Like, I feel that responsibility, right? Are you with me? See, I think when God looks at us and he says, man, be true children, true children of, of your heavenly father. You know, it's this idea that God is growing us up. That in many ways, when we call him our father, that we are identifying ourselves as son and daughter. And what we're doing is we are identifying ourselves not just as people who are loved, but people who are being parented and people who are being challenged. And then when we read a very difficult verse, a verse that's actually much easier to talk about than to practice, that we wouldn't just go, "Uh uh-uh, nope. That we'd actually be willing to listen and willing to be shaped and willing to say, what is it in this passage that he would think was so significant for me? Because here's the deal. For every single one of us, we talk about leading people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. That's why, truthfully, we hammer small groups. Because we believe that growing, like growing in your relationship happens best in the context of a circle of people. We want you to grow. Part of growing is recognizing that, yes, Jesus loves me, but Jesus also is going to challenge me. That he's going to challenge me to spiritually grow up. That he wants me to spiritually mature. And part of spiritual spiritual maturity is is how we practice life with the people around us. And that we wouldn't just shut him off and say, hey man, this is what it is and I'm gonna deal with it like I am. That we'd actually open our hearts to say, God, help me to deal with these people the way that you want me to deal with them. Help me with this. You know, I gotta tell you, um, I've, I've had some people in my life that were enemies. Not very many. There's not very many people, I could count them on one hand, I think, that I would say were enemies right? Anybody? Yeah. Anybody have any enemies? Am I the only one who's ever? Okay. <laughs> you know, and, and I, ha- I had a lady and she, you know, I don't know what I did, but from day one, I mean, I knew she classified me as an, en- an enemy. She, um, she didn't feel any pitter patter for me <laughs> and she did not will my good. In fact, if anything, she told me just the opposite. You know, she, whoo, whoo, she was rough. And she would let me have it. And, you know, many times I tried just to avoid her. And I tried, if I saw her coming, I'd try to walk the other direction. Um, I mean, this lady, she was a piece of work. And in my heart, like she was really, really difficult for me. And, and there was many times, I mean, I'll be truthful. I wish she'd just go down the road. I wish she'd just go to another church because not only was she hard on me, she was hard on everybody else around her. And she just beat people up. But, but I'll tell you this, I look back. And my dealings with this lady, it was shaping in my life. You know, here's the deal. There's times, I mean, if everybody in your life was easy, there wouldn't be much shaping going on. Sometimes I think God allows us to rub shoulders with people who are different than us, who are sometimes difficult for us, sometimes who are enemies and you just want them out of your life, but for whatever reason, they continue to pop up in your life. Because sometimes I think he's trying to help us to navigate in those relationships. Not navigate around them, but navigate through them. Because it's in those complicated, difficult relationships in which he shapes us and he takes the edges off. You ever experienced that? It's where he teaches you about you. And he helps you to, to practice grace when it seems impossible to do. He helps you to love when you're not being loved in return. 
It's just like what you see in this passage. It's easy to love those who love you. Even the pagans do that. What Jesus is saying is, what looks like me, what takes my power to accomplish, is when you actually love people who do not love you. That when you actually display my grace and my unconditional love to people who want to hurt you, that's when the world will see me. You know, I want to be a child that looks like my heavenly father. You know, um, it's interesting because if I really want to be a child who walks in the footsteps of my father, walks in the footsteps of, of Jesus, right? Look where the footsteps of Jesus went. The footsteps of Jesus carried him to death marched him right to death. And, and here's the deal. I mean, I think you get this, right? Jesus didn't have to die. Not willingly. That Jesus could have chosen at any point in time to turn that whole circumstance around. But he didn't. He chose to love those that did not love him. He chose to die for the very people who were nailing him on a cross. Amazing. I mean, all we got to do is just kind of plug ourselves into, his, into that process and you go, I don't know how he did that, right? I mean, how could he do that? But when I'm, when I'm thinking about that picture, I think, what does that mean for us? I, I think sometimes what it means for us is that when we're walking towards in the midst of, of life with complicated relationships and dealing with enemies and dealing with people who hurt us, that sometimes what it's about, it's not about balling up and it's not about our pride and it's not about, well, man, you know, I'm not doing anything. Like I'm not about to be nice until they come and they bow before me and they ask for forgiveness, right? See, it's about saying, I'm willing to let my pride die. I'm willing to let my, my rights for retaliation to die. I'm willing to, to just say, hey, I, I don't have, like, this is not about me. But God, I want to operate in this relationship like it's only about you. And, and what, this, what this picture of, of Jesus gives us is that to experience the power of the resurrection, death had to come first. To experience God doing a new work and empowering you in your life to deal with complicated people, to deal with your enemies. It means that you personally and your will and your, your power and your need to retaliate and your need to strike back, that all of that gets taken away. And you say, God, this isn't about me anymore, but this is about you. And I'm trusting that if I make it about you, that the same power that was given away and then was displayed from God the Father when he rolled that tomb away will be the same power that is displayed in my life when I'm trying to love people who are unlovable. Amen. There was a really cool story in the Bible. Many of you are probably, some of you are familiar with the story of David and he was being chased by King Saul who was wanting his head on a platter. And there was a book, actually, Pastor John gave me um, this week, and I was looking through it. And, and the, the question was, what do we do when someone is throwing spears at us? Great question, right? Do we fight back? Do we defend? Do we tell them off? Do we write them off? And there, there was a quote from this book that said this, David embraced the cruel circumstances. He lifted no hand nor offered resistance, nor did he grandstand his piety. Silently, privately, he bore humiliation. Because of this, he was deeply wounded. His whole inner being was mutilated. His personality was altered. And then catch this line. When the gore was over, David was barely recognizable. Now you may say, man, I don't want that, right? <laughs> when the gore was over, David was barely recognizable. See, here's the picture. When we lay down our right to fight back, when we lay down our right to retaliate, when we lay down our pride 
See, the truth is, when the ugliness of that relationship is over, when, when our, our, our responding with ugliness is over, and God has done this shaping work in the midst of that relationship, what is left is barely recognizable. See, when you, when you look at the finish of this passage, look at it with me. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt, corrupt tax collectors do that much. And if you're kind only to friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. There's a passage in the Bible that says this, by, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. See, it's this picture that someone might look at you and say, man, I remember when they would have like taken my head off. I remember when they would have just let me have it verbally. I remember when they would have written me off, but they're responding completely different than they used to. In fact, they respond so different, they're hardly even recognizable. And I pray that we would be so unrecognizable because we don't look like who we used to. And what people see is this work of God that is visible in our lives because we've received this unconditional love from him which he's chosen to give while we were sinners, while we were enemies. And now that love is working its way through us. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you. I thank you for this morning and a very difficult message. Lord, I believe that there's people here today who just need to be set free who need some peace in the midst of feeling a mess, who have enemies that they need to bring to you, enemies that they need to lay down, that they would lay down the right to retaliate. Lord, I'm not talking about, you know, there's certain relationships that we really should not be in. They're not good for us. I'm not saying that we should go ask for abuse. I'm not saying that we should go up and just give people hugs and but I don't believe you are either. I think what you're saying is that we'd actually get to the place where we could want what you want for them. That we could see how you love them unconditionally. You give us a new perspective. And that we would allow our harsh feelings, our negative feelings, our, our need to retaliate to go away. We recognize we need your help to do so. Lord, what we also know is for those of us who've dealt with enemies before, they become heavy. Those feelings are hard to carry around. I pray that you'd take those feelings that you would remove them with your power, that you would remove them and you'd replace them with your peace. With your peace and you'd flood us with your love in a way which it would change who we are. God, I give you thanks. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.